Let's talk about rule-based styles in QGIS. Use rule-based styles in QGIS when you want to style a class of features a certain way. And um, you might be more familiar with doing a categorized style or a graduated style. Um, and those are appropriate for many uses in QGIS. I'm looking at fire perimeter data here. If I look at the attribute table, uh, you might imagine we could do a graduated style based on the acreage, for example. Um, we could do a categorized style based on the agency. Let's do both of those very briefly. Categorize based on agency, classify it. Um, you can see the which agency um, reported each of these perimeters here. And you can see the values and the colors. Um, and um, could do something similar for graduated, for looking at GIS, the acreage, and we hit classify. Now we're looking at um, where the values are between uh, two values in a range and styling the class of features that matches that range one way um, and the class that matches another range another way and so on throughout the graduated style. So the difference between these and a rule-based style is that um, I actually want to not start with with all of this um, is that you might um, you might want to define expressions that are uh, specific to your data set that are more more complicated than just categorizing or just doing a graduated style. So thinking back to our filtering uh, video, maybe I want to see just the LA County uh, fires over a certain size with one style, everything else another style. Typically the way you would do this is, oh, you might have two layers, um, one that's filtered for the um, LA County uh, fires over 100,000, one that's filtered for everything else. But you can pretty easily do that with a rule-based style. The way you'll do that is you add rules. The first rule is um, I'm going to do the specific uh, features that we want to highlight in this case. And I'll give it a label, LA over, okay. And I'm going to write an expression for it. Under fields and values, I'm going to find unit ID equal to LAC and also the area greater than 100,000. When I do that, we see it actually just highlights one of the features, um, and that's fine. And I might style it, uh, let's do something. something fiery like that. Um, but as I was saying earlier, I want to also see all of the other features. Uh, so I'll add another rule. I'll make this other rule an else rule. And I will style this a little bit differently. Also red, but maybe a little bit less visible. I might pull the opacity down a bit and I might remove the stroke. You get the idea. Um, one thing you'll notice is the order of these um, is not strictly the order that they show up here. And if you want to reorder those, um, the rules, which features uh, appear on top and which appear on the bottom, click on symbol levels and make the ones that you want higher up have a higher value. So 
making them one should pull the LA County ones up to the top while we can still see the others. And you can make as many of these rules as you need to. So um, anything you can write an expression for, um, such as this one, you can make one of the rules and you can style it exactly however you want, um, the way you would with QGIS in general. And as with categorized and graduated styles, you can turn these on and off independently. Let me go back to graduated for a minute, because I want to show you something that I accidentally did earlier, but you may find useful. Uh, so if you have a graduated style like this one, um, and you wanted to tweak it, not just tweak the values, but maybe you want to uh, do some more complicated expressions on top of that. One way you can do that is convert the graduated style to a rule-based one. And that is as simple as creating your graduated style as you would any other time, and then come up here and change it to rule-based. And here you can see that this is how QGIS more or less does a graduated style. It makes a rule for each class, and it says the acreage has to be greater than or equal to this value, and also the acreage has to be less than or equal to this value. So it's defining the scale at either side. Um, and from here, we could edit these, we could change the values, we could add some other filters to it, um, this is one way that you might think about doing a bivariate choropleth, where the colors get mixed a little bit more complicated than uh, the way a simple choropleth with graduated styles works.